What is good, Grey Gang? Today we're going to be doing a catch and cook. Now, I know, guys, we went all summer and not done a catch and cook. And even that snapping turtle that I said I was going to catch and cook, we actually made the video. But there was a guy hardcore weed eating in the background, and it kind of ruined the video. So that kind of stinks, but don't worry. We are going to do the turtle catch and cook, the next turtle we'll catch. But right now, we're going to be doing a bluegill catch and cook or panfish, either one. And in order to catch those bluegill, I have to find my own bait, which is going to be red worms. So to find red worms, you want to come over here to a little bricks and stuff like that. Look under them, see what's under them. Hopefully, you got some worms under there. Nothing under, well, there kind of is. Yeah, we got one little one right there. He's a l really small one. But honestly, guys, I think I can catch one on that, no problem. I mean, I'm only looking for about one or two fish because I'm not really wanting to eat a whole lot. But we are going to cook them up and put them in my tummy. We'll set that guy right there until we can check this cinder block, which hopefully has some big ones. It has nothing. Okay, let's go check another one. Little bricks like this, little flat ones that's been here. Looks like they've been here for about, I don't know, about three, four centuries or something. They're good for worms. I mean, there's nothing under that one. Probably nothing under this one. Okay, yeah, there was. There was one. Oh, where was he at? We have to find him. There was a worm. No, he's going deeper. Okay, well, I guess it's just part of worm hunting. You win some, you lose some. And it just so happens I lost that one. Now, keep in mind, we don't need many worms. It's not like we need a dozen or two dozen or anything like that. We really only need about, well, two, actually. Because we're truly just after two fish. And sometimes you can catch two fish on one worm. But sometimes you may use five worms to catch one fish. So you always got to catch a few more than you think you need. I got to admit, guys, finding these worms are harder than your boy expected. Nothing. Yes, here we go. Here's a big one too. I think it's oh two of them, two big ones. That's great. That's great. We should uh, we should do perfectly fine with these two. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. Two of those. We we should have plenty of worms today. Like I done said, guys, we're not looking for a lot of bluegill. We just want about two or three, just enough to make us you know not starve to death today at lunch. But as for now, let's go about 20 feet over that way and fish at the pond. And here we are, guys. We're right about the pond. Caught the worms right over there. And there is some pretty good sized bluegill in here. Now they're not 12 inches long, but they're pretty good eating size. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So it's perfect. I've already got a red worm rigged up on a bobber right there. Really simple rig and everything. Just a bobber rig bobber about a foot higher than the hook and a sinker red worm on it you'll catch a bluegill all day long but anyways no need to waste any time here let's get started here we go that is the rod i'm gonna be using that's actually my wacky worm rod it's really really like not stiff it bends really well it's got a medium action but it bends like a whole lot more than you'd think for a medium the worms are in there but i've already got us a little one rigged up right there on the hook for bluegill you don't need to put too much worm on the hook because i mean bluegill they're not exactly expecting them a lot they're just happy to get whatever they can get gonna toss it out there let it sit for a second whenever the bobber goes under i'm just gonna jerk it a little bit and hopefully you know stab a fish in the mouth and reel it in there he is not a bad one not a bad one oh that's perfect eating size perfect eating size a big old bluegill sun granny looking outfit right here perfect for what we're wanting to do here today is just eat her up and don't worry guys yes we are eating fish are we hurting the population of this pond no we're not guys there's there's hundreds of them in here. And every now and again, it's actually good to take fish out of the pond because let's say you got a thousand fish this size and they're not getting any bigger. If you take maybe 200 of those out, those remaining 800 can actually get bigger because they can have more food. Is that what I'm doing here today? No, not really. I'm just getting these so that I can eat them. But there, we'll set that guy in there. Oh, wow. Well, he's excited to be cooked. But there we go. We've already got one. That's a good sign. We just need one more that size and I think we're good to go. We've done got one fish. I'm just going to thread this worm right up on the hook. Same old thing. Just dump it in right over there. Give it a second. Wait for the bobber to go under. Jerk a little bit. We should be good to go. Get us another bluegill. Oh, boom. Right away. See how big he is. Is he big enough to eat? I believe he is, guys. I believe that's perfect eating size. We're not going to waste any time, guys. I think these two are about some of the biggest ones in the pond. So perfect eating size right here, about the size of your hand. I'm going to keep them both. And I'll tell you what, guys. Let's go on out and let's start cooking them up. Okay, guys. Welcome to the table. We're about to destroy these. I mean, cook. I mean, fillet these fish up and get them good to go. Now, I've done killed them both. They're both dead as a doornail. As you can see, first thing you want to do is get a scaler. Now, this is a really weird scaler, but it's yellow and it looks really cool. All I'm going to do is scale it. This is kind of hard, but... I mean, that's basically all you do. You can do it with this. A spoon works really good sometimes. And you do want to do this outside because it's pretty messy as well. Be sure to get all the scales off of both sides because if you eat one of the scales, they don't taste good 
at all. And so then you have that. And I'm going to bring you up closer to do the second fish. That way you can see a little bit closer what I'm going to be doing exactly. Second fish, same exact thing. Bring him in. Hold him down. All we're doing is scraping those scales off. The scales, they sit in this direction. So I'm just going to get like a spoon or something and come and scrape them off by pushing in the other direction. And uh, kind of the hardest part, I will say, is holding them down the right way because, well, it's a fish and you're trying to take its scales off. That's not exactly meant to happen in nature. So it's not exactly easy in nature. And so you may be asking, Kendall, dude, are you going to fillet this fish or are you just going to scale it? I'll be honest, guys. I don't really know yet. I think I might fillet it with the skin on, save a little bit of meat, but that way I don't have to eat any bones. Because eating bones, I don't know. I ain't into that kind of stuff, I guess. Now, to fillet these bad boys, I'm not an expert filleter. I'm going to point the knife right at you, and do not get mad at me in the comments if I do one cut wrong, okay? I'm telling you right now, guys, I'm not a professional. I just act like one. But in all honesty, guys, I'm just trying to get some lunch, okay? But I think the first thing is you dive in here. Okay, just like that. See, guys, I'm already I'm already showing I'm not a professional. I've already cut into the guts. You're not supposed to do that, I promise. But I think I'm going to come right down through here. Just make a little cut right above the spine. And I think I know how to fillet a fish. I mean, dang. Yep, right through there. Come it. Run it right down through the bone. We've actually done a bluegill catching cook before. And we, I think, it, well, we done it really wrong. Instead of using like flour, we used a corn starch. And that is not the same thing as corn meal. And uh, needless to say, we about died. And we could not eat the fish. But now I'm just running my knife right across the bones, trying not to cut them. I may be cutting them. I don't know. I'm trying not to though. Okay, okay. This is kind of cool. I think we're getting somewhere now. Nope, definitely got some bones in there. Yep, definitely got some bones in there. Good job, Kendall. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to eat a bone today. Okay, we just got a lot of bones right there. Oh, wow. That was a chunky one right there. There is a lot of bones in that meat, and that is about the size of a chicken nugget, but that's okay, because we got this side and another fish to practice on. I think this time I'm going to start up here at the head, though, and go down first, instead of making that weird cut across its head. Okay, guys, that is our second one, and that's actually worse than the first one, so uh, we're not doing a good job, guys. That's what... Look at that. I'm doing an awful job. I'm sorry, guys. If you're trying to learn from this, please don't try to learn. Just uh, watch it for entertainment, I guess, because I'm not doing a good job at showing you how to do it right. So I'm going to put this guy over here in the dead bucket, I guess, and we're going to try to do something a little bit different on this guy. I don't know what I'm going to do different, but I'm going to try to do it different, I guess. Some people say that you got to hit the deep ruts. Mm -mm, not me. I think you got to hit the deep cuts, guys. And uh, that's where your real jewels are. And I believe we about got it. If we can get, it, get, get away from these ribs a little bit, I think we got it. There we go. We got it. Boom. Yes. Well, okay. We're not done yet. Uh, let's rip this piece of skin. Boom. We got it. Okay. That is what we got, guys. We have this right here to eat. Oh, man. This is a... Uh... That's our food, guys. I'm not going to lie. I may starve today. I think I'll have to cook some fries on the side, but we're going to go ahead and put this guy over here. I'm going to go on in the house, put these in their own separate little container thing, put them in some salt water. That way, I don't know, it just helps them, I think. Maybe try to cut some of the uh, ribs out of this one. And I mean, guys, right now we're going to go take care of these dead fish. And guys, I think I'll see you about lunchtime in the kitchen. Ah! And as for these two fish right here, I'm going to go ahead and get them. Get them in my hand here. Walk right over here to the pond. Release them right there. We can come back catch them next year. I'm proud to be a catcher and release fisherman. Now I'll see you in the kitchen. Okay, guys, we are inside right now. We're about to deep fry. We're going to use a deep fry and cook us some fish. Here's what they look like, guys. They really don't look that bad at all. Kind of. I'll pull one up for you. See, I mean, it's a little bitty piece of fish right there. Now, usually whenever you're about to eat fish, whenever you're cooking fish, you're going to want to put them into some kind of batter. A fish batter. And so, you know, I had the eggs out. I had the flour out. I was going to make me a fish batter. Well, it didn't take long until I realized those eggs ran out in April. So, needless to say... I don't have any egg batter today, and I have no idea what I'm doing. But I do have a little bit of flour here, like, I guess I'm gonna roll plain fish in flour. I don't really know anymore. Just like I said whenever I was filleting the fish, I'm not a professional at that. I'm not a professional cook either, so I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing right now. I'll just be honest. All I really know right now is if I put meat in a deep fryer, it does something about like this. And 
then it tastes pretty good. That's about all I know, guys. Last year's panfish catch and cook, whenever me and Adam done this part, we accidentally used corn starch, which is apparently used for candy. We almost died trying to eat it. We're supposed to use corn meal. And we used corn starch. As I'm out here cooking, don't forget that guy right there. His name is Timothy. He is always with us. He's sort of like a good luck charm. Every time I cook my breakfast over here, which is ironically eggs, and somehow I let them go by April. That is not my fault, okay? I ate good eggs. They were perfect. They were in date like two days ago. I have no idea where that carton came from. It is not mine, okay? It said 421 on it. So about 20 seconds ago, I took them outside and chucked them out a tree. And now we're about to dip these in here, put them in the frying pan, and listen to the sizzle go... Right now, we got it on a solid 380 degrees. I'm gonna lay it right there. Now, it's not in the grease yet. I've got it hovering over top. And since these things right here are smaller than chicken nuggets as it is, and whenever you fry stuff, it usually shrinks it up, I might have a solid 30 calories after I get done eating this. Like, I'm not gonna have much food, guys. Let's set them on in there and see what happens. Okay, nothing happened. Whenever it gets frying, I guess I'll get back to you. Got a little update right here they're starting to kind of float whenever some whenever something in a deep fryer floats that means it's done they don't look quite done but well they're not floating yet either you can just see them they're trying to float but they're not truly floating yet and that goes for chicken french fries fish whatever you want whenever it starts floating in a deep fryer that means they're done or at least that's what gordon ramsay told me if you have a problem with that go ask him okay that is what happens whenever you try to do a youtube catch and cook Generally, you will go hungry. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, this fish right here, it probably ain't gonna taste good. I mean, I was gonna cook these two pieces of tilapia that I caught this morning at my creek, but you know, I mean, they're kind of frozen right now. But before this fish gets too done and I go ahead and tear into it with my molars back in here, I want to let y'all know if you want to support the channel, buy some merch. This is the Bucky shirt. Bucky doesn't play games. You can pick up that. And also, I want you guys to hit the like button. If we can get 3,000 likes, I'm going to do another catch and cook. Like, if we can get a solid 3,000 likes, I think a turtle is next or a catfish. One of the two. But either way, go ahead and hit the like button if you want more of these. And now, guys, they quit sizzling so hard. They've kind of just riddled down a little bit to where well they're not making much noise they are floating up on the top a little bit i think they're done they're kind of crispy brown i can definitely see some bones in that one right there but uh well let's just hope that i don't exactly choke and die man am i gonna be feasting tonight i'm gonna feed my family for days with these things but yeah i'm gonna let them sit then i'll come out with some ketchup of course because as you know ketchup makes up for the lack of taste this is what chef kendall has prepared for me today as you can see over there presentation is everything whenever the taste is awful with this ketchup over here i got a tiny plate literally about i don't know Two inches wide. So I'm gonna go in for the first bite. I think I'm gonna get this nugget right here. Check it. Make sure that there's no bone sticking out of it. Okay, I think I'm good. Get a good gracious, gracious bit of ketchup on there just in case. Here we go. Okay, it was good. It was actually pretty good. Don't hate on me. Just hit the like button if you like these ketchup cooks. That way I'll know to do more. I'm gonna go Try to puke these bones out real quick. Great gang, thank you for watching Noah and Kendall Brady's great videos. Please subscribe to him, like all of his videos, help him out, and hashtag great gang, hashtag Jesus.